Hey lovelies, you're welcome back to Reviews and Recaps. Let's get into it. But just before that, you're welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're here for the first time, I do reviews, I do commentary on reality TV shows and everything in between. So please subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're a subscriber, thank you so much. Let's get into today's video. So we're doing a recap of Ready to Love. Now, the episode started at Men's Lounge. Tommy was basically telling the men he'll be setting them up on a blind date. I was like, okay, this should be interesting. And so Tommy started saying that, you know, it's going to be Tommy's choice. I'm like, okay, Tommy. I'm curious to see how it all turns out. I know it's about to be some mess. Anyway, so Marvin was the first one to go on a date. He went on a date with Tequila. You all know I call tequila, tequila on this channel. So let's follow it, all right? Let's keep going. So they went to a place called Electric Shuffle. I was like, okay, this looks interesting. I actually liked tequila on this date. So this is the first time that I would actually say, do you know what? I saw tequila in a good light. Because last episode, it was not looking good for her. But anyways, I was. it was interesting to see her interact with Marvin and i think in a way i always feel like with tequila it's like she likes whoever is giving her attention so in that moment she looks really excited for the date she looks like she was having a good time tickling marvin to be honest i love seeing her like that i hated what she was wearing but i love seeing her like that and i was like do you know what i would like to see more of that and not the bad vibes that we see you know so but yeah that that's what i got from that day but i already knew on the date that it was also giving friend vibes it wasn't really giving like anything romantic if we're being honest it was given she's a cool girl she can hang and i was like all right if they like it i love it so moving on chris now chris is the one with the beautiful smile he's he's a gorgeous man as well so so Mr. Chris went on a date. It was a blind date. He didn't know who, who he was being set up with, right? The next thing, this beautiful girl turned up. I was like, okay, she's tall or whatever. Is she tall or is Chris short? I didn't notice that Chris was that short. But then again, it could have been that the girl was just really tall. Um, but yeah, like if anyone knows how tall is Chris, let us know in the comment section below. But yeah, so she's a registered nurse. Um, she's really pretty. It honestly looks like they were having such a good time. They were talking. It seemed like they had a lot in common. Chris asked her, like, what was her non-negotiable or deal breaker for her? She was like, well, you know, she can't date someone who does not get happy about life. Oh my God. If you guys have been following me for a while, you guys know I talk about that a lot. I don't like anyone. I cannot date anyone that does not have a zest for life. Just because I'm like, the way I am, the person that I am, i have a zest for life i just i, I uh, take it from me i dated someone once who did not have a zest for life and that was the most frustrating experience ever like imagine you're so excited to tell someone something excited about an experience and the person is just like okay then i'm like guy can i get something like some excitement this person didn't want to go anywhere so yes girl i'm with you katarina i'm not not with it like i do nope that is a deal breaker for me if i see you ain't got a zest for life i am out you all know chris smiles a lot but chris was smiling from ear to ear he was just smiling he was loving it so janelle was going on a date she went on a date with someone called christopher now this is where tommy decided to throw us another curveball christopher is a new person he is an entrepreneur is 34 he owns a family so he and his family own a company together um i don't know what the company was about but yeah it actually seemed like janelle was like really like oh he cute and don't get me wrong christopher is beautiful i think i guess there's something about people called chris honey they be gorgeous but anyways so yeah the vibe was good it looked like they had a lot in common like if i'm being honest i feel like i know why tommy set up janelle and christopher although it definitely looks like there is a huge gap in their ages so i'm not really sure if that's gonna work out um but chris and katarina it felt like it was such a good vibe like they got on really well so well done tommy for those two picks and janelle and christopher also went to the same high school together 
I guess I guess I'm guessing because of the age difference it would have probably been like different years, maybe years apart or something, but at least they had that in common. So that was interesting. And then Philip went on a date with Tequila. I'm like, Tequila is like it was like they were really trying to get Tequila out this episode. So Tequila and Phil went on a date and I was like, Yeah, this is about to be a mess. You all know they don't get along well so but you guys put them on the day it's like what are you guys trying to do uncle tommy i see what you did there you were trying to give us some really good tv so you're like i'm a pit there's people that don't like each other on a date together anyway so they basically started talking it was not a vibe at all they were talking about cats and phil was like i don't like cats and tequila was she doesn't like dogs and she's scared of dogs i'm like what is going on so sierra joined the day and i was like oh thank you thank you sierra hopefully you can change it switch up the conversation a little bit what was interesting was like as soon as sierra joined the conversation man philip was not in he did not even try to make eye contact with tequila his body language was directed to us sierra he was not feeling tequila and it was obvious i'm just like dude it's a three-way right at least try to give both women some level of attention right like don't make one feel like the third will like if anything i feel like tequila probably would have felt like the third will but interesting that she did not react about that so i was like okay girl well done for that then they were all just talking and whatnot sierra was talking about the fact that you know she wants kids as many as she can have but like for someone who wants a big family, basically, she got to start doing it now. I'm like, all right, girl. So basically, she's ready to get eggs cracked is what she's saying. OK, so Tequila then basically said to Phil that she felt like he was holding a grudge. And he's like, what? He just looked like, oh, God, I don't want to be bothered with you. Like, why are you bringing this up? So Tequila was like, you know, she said to herself she wants to be with a forgiven man. And so, and in my head, I'm like, okay, if you want to be with a forgiven man, then he's not your man. If that's, if you feel like he's holding a grudge, like, let it be that, right? It is what it is, right? Not everyone is for you. And I think Tequila has this thing where she sort of feels like everyone should. Like, why wouldn't you like me that sort of need for validation is what i'm getting and it's not cute it's giving low self-esteem right and i just don't think i think that's what is coming across because it really shouldn't be an issue if you guys had a conversation it didn't go well first impressions it didn't land well okay then move on he's not for you you're not for him everyone is happy i hope let's move on He basically said, let us allow it to be what it is. And I agree. I completely agree. I was like, Tequila, you bringing it up was not necessary. But if that gave you closure, I hope you got what you needed. So the next date was Red Herbert, um, the new boy, Christopher, um, Aries, Lee and Unique. So they all, it was a really, really interesting activity. When I tell you Lee was giving everyone a run for their money like she is so athletic oh my goodness it is so cute like watching her like run and maneuver all the guys and all of that i was like yes girl like this is this is cute and then she said she likes the dates because she wants to see um she wants to make sure a man can run that's like a requisite i'm like wait that's a requirement you need a man that can run like for what for what reason like are you running from trouble like what is the what is the reason honestly hope that no one is expecting me to be able to run imagine going on a date and your date is like can you run i'm like uh no (laughs) do you need me to run like run over to the other side like what is going on but anyway it was interesting seeing her in her element also she said she had been working out since she was five i was like okay that is interesting i want to see what her parents look like because i get the impression her parents must be into fitness because how did she get into fitness from when she was five her dad is probably like this muscular looking man or something i don't know i'm just curious i can't wait until i hope she stays on the show for long so we can see her parents or her family and we can like find that out i'm just curious about that anyways 
Christopher and Eunuch were having like a sidebar conversation after the game and Eunuch was basically saying to Chris that she had been married before and that she just doesn't take ish. I'm like, wait, the thing about it is the way she said it, it does come across as like you have a lot of baggage, right? Someone is just trying to get to know you. This is their first opportunity to meet you, to talk to you. They don't know anything about you. So if their first time the way you're leading in the conversation is that you don't take no ish, then everyone is like, what is going... Like, are you here for war? Like, what is going on? Did you guys pick up on Christopher's face, right? His face was like, what? Like, he w- he did not appreciate that. I re- As soon as I saw his face, I'm like, he felt some type of way about that. He was not like to her, like, you know, you ain't playing no games. I was like, mm-mm he does not like it over on the other side Herbert and Lee were having a conversation Herbert is the guy with the locks honey so they were having a conversation Lee was talking about the fact that you know this process is different for her like she's used to like liking somebody and focusing all our efforts on that person and Herbert was like you know trying to flirt flirt but Lee was not like budging the funny thing is Herbert was like oh he feels like there's something there I'm like really I don't feel it for you from Lee. Lee just seems like she wants to be with the personal trainer, Quentin. Yes. And I feel like that's who she wants to be with and no one else. Because I don't think that she's really feeling Herbert like that. But I may be wrong. Or maybe like she's reserved at the moment until like maybe we will see their connection later. But for now, I'm not seeing any connection there. I'll be honest. I really am not. So Herbert was then having a conversation with Eunuch and Eunuch was talking about how Herbert's energy is very calming. And I'm like, hmm, this, I feel like Herbert's energy is attractive, most mostly attractive to women who need healing because to them, he feels like a safe space. To them, he feels like he could heal them, right? Or they think that he can heal them. So the thing is, Yes, Herbert, I'm sure, will attract healed people, but also people who need healing because he has that, like, sort of healing, calming presence, right? So sometimes he's probably going to get a lot of strays, in my opinion. So it's now up to him to be able to pick the right person and make sure there ain't no stray. I do like how Herbert was saying in his confessionals that he feels like Unique needs to heal first before dating. I'm like, I'm glad you could pick that up because that's why she said his his energy is calming. It feels like a safe space. I'm like, honey, she is indirectly telling you like, I feel like I can rest with you, which is a good thing. Yes, you should be able to rest with someone, but for someone who has led very much this season with her trauma i feel like you then being attracted to that when you are not healed yet is giving me you want to be on a healing journey with herbert now i don't know if he wants to be on that journey with you because i don't sense him feeling that attraction towards you but i guess we'll we'll have we'll have to see so then kyra phil mervin and jessica and katarina we're on a date so tommy basically set them up and what he did was phil kyra mervin and jessica were there first and then katarina walked in later and so the girls were like hey hey girl hey girl and katarina was like she did not know if the girls were being like hey girl as in happy or hey girl like what are you doing here i'm like girl they did not want to see you they were like especially kyra i was like kyra what is this energy towards this new girl i don't like that it was given a karen vibe i'm like at the end of the day right you guys are all here to date other people no one is locked in yet it's what maybe day three like so no one is locked in yet what is the issue why is it given you don't want someone else coming don't get me wrong i can be very territorial so i get it but you are coming onto the show and signing up to tell them you want to be flexy right you want to date other people you want to see the people you are dating date other people so i don't understand it you know 
Yeah, I was not feeling Kyra's energy this episode. So anyways, Marvin pulled Kat to the side and then they started talking. He was telling her about his erotica and she was like, you know, well, I appreciate a man living in his truth. I was like, what truth? Like, you're acting like he just came out. Like, what are you talking about? Like, what are you talking? What truth are you talking about? Like, I don't, I don't get it. So she started telling him that she used to be a nurse. She used to be an ER nurse and that it was really, really difficult. And that she then moved on to start, like, moved away from that and now owns a beauty bar. I was like, girl, I understand. I was a, I was a lawyer. Still, I'm a lawyer, but decided not to practice for now. I put that on pause and I'm doing other things. And yeah, like, so I get it. I get it. Sometimes you need a break. Sometimes you need to do something else. Sometimes you try something else and then you love it. And then you're like, do you know what? I'm happy where I am for now. And then you just stay there. But I think if I never qualified and practiced as a lawyer, I'd have probably been thinking, oh, I really want to be a lawyer. And how can I get there and stuff like that? But like, I'm glad it was something that I achieved because it was it was one of my goals that was important to me and I did it, you know, and I then decided to move into something else. So, yeah, I guess that's that. That's the end of my TED talk. On the other side, Maria and Jessica were having a sidebar conversation. So Maria was basically saying to her, her, he's feeling her and all of that. And what was interesting was I was looking at Jessica's response and I'll be honest I don't think she was feeling him I don't understand what's going on and the funny thing is he seems to get the he seems to be of the impression that they're locked in because he seems to be like oh I like her I like her I'm like are you even getting to know the other people or are you stuck on this one person who don't even like you in my opinion okay like it was given She wasn't really attracted to him. It was given when you're forced to speak to somebody. Her facial expressions, her body language. She just wasn't giving, I'm interested in this man, in my opinion. So anyway, she asked him like what happened with his last relationship. And so he was basically saying that he has a daughter, a child with his ex, um, but that she was going back and forth with her ex. So even though he's from a long lineage of two parents household, And he wanted to keep that. But if she was going back and forth with her ex, he basically just thought they should co-parent and go their separate ways. So he basically sent her back to her ex, honey. He was like, I'm not playing this back and forth games with you or anyone. Which is fair enough. At the end of the day, yes, you want a two-parent household, but you cannot force it, especially with someone who is still sprung on their ex, right? Like, stuck on their ex. So you might as well just let it go and move on. So Marvin was having a sidebar conversation with Kyra. So Marvin basically talked about how he wanted to move back to the Virgin Islands in about six to eight years. He talks about, like, raising his children and imagine his children, like, in soggy diapers on the beach and that sort of thing. He even mentioned that his father is leaving in Virgin Islands and that's something that you talk about and when he just talks about and he just sees the laid back life that his father lives is something that he thinks about and wants to do. So Kyra was saying in her confessionals that she feels like that's a red flag for her because she does not have any intentions of moving or want to move and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, fair enough. I don't think I would say red flag, so to speak, but I would say that that is a barrier because red flag for me is more of an indication, like something from something about this person, his personality, his temperament something about who this person is or what they do is a red flag right it's more of a something about them right as opposed to some a step they wish to take right i don't know if maybe it's just my understanding but that's how i see red flags right so for that i think that's more of a barrier like that's more of like oh I'm thinking I want to do this in a few years, right? Life plans do not align, right? Which then means, okay, let's, let's, let's go a separate ways. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that is a red flag about his 
but may, maybe people, people have different um, interpretations of what red flag is. I'm just saying what my interpretation of red flag is. When I think red flag, I'm like, something about you ain't right. And I got to go, <laughs> right? That's how I see it. As opposed to you saying, oh, I want to move to the Virgin Islands. Even if I don't want to move to the Virgin Islands, I'm thinking, okay, we have some issue. We have an issue that we need to figure out if we have a compromise on or if it's going to then be a deal breaker and we will have to go our separate ways. Let me know which definition you guys think is correct in the comment section. I'm quite curious, like, what do you guys think red flags are? Do you think that him saying he's moving to Virgin Islands is a red flag? Or do you think red flag is more of a personality, something about a character issue? Let me know in the comment section below. Anyways, Phil and Kat, they were basically having a good old chat. It looks like they're, like, super um cute together phil was actually then saying something that threw me off i'll be honest right so kat starts talking about the fact that she loves traveling she loves all of that and then phil was like yeah you know i've done a lot of domestic travel i'm like aka I've, you've traveled all within the u.s okay but um you know i need someone to expand my tr i'm like you don't need nobody to expand your travel thing come on like no one ever told me, oh, yo, go to Portugal, go to Greece, go to the United States, go to this. No one ever told me. I picked up my freaking thing and I traveled, right? I didn't need anyone to be like, yo, let's do this. Let's like, let's this be a goal, right? I just did that. So you either want to do it or you don't. So that was a bit odd for me. I'll be honest. That was something I thought was odd. I was like, dude, if you really had a thing about traveling, you would have been traveling, right? You you would not need someone to tell you to leave the United States, honey. Like, what? Mm -mm. Yeah, no, nah, that was weird. Anyways, finally, the guys got back to the men's lounge. So they were all just like chit-chatting about like who they're feeling. It feels like Christopher, the new guy, is feeling janelle he really enjoyed his date with janelle i enjoyed their date too quentin was feeling janelle he started talking about janelle is the one person that he talks to and feels the most comfortable speaking so i'm like janelle is doing something because all these guys are like feeling her so the guys also talked about feeling katarina so i'm like okay they like the newbie as well which is normal and then Tommy was like, okay, so who are you guys not feeling? So Tequila's name came up a few times. Unique's name came up as well. The guys were not feeling the fact that, like, they feel like it's too heavy with her, like she's going through something. Christopher also brought up the fact that she said she doesn't take no ish, and the way she said it, he was just like, yeah, nah. I picked up on it. I'm not surprised he brought it up in the men's lounge so basically they went on the elimination date and finally they eliminated tequila i'll be honest i'm not surprised they eliminated tequila i am not surprised at all like yeah she already said like if they eliminate her bb she needs to go and i guess she, i guess they said here is the door like go with him so she needs to make sure she goes back home and kit rekindles with her lovely lovely habibi i'm sure you guys detest my sarcasm i hope i hope so and that was the end of the episode now did you guys see the preview for the next episode it's about to be a foolery i hope you guys are ready make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already make sure you subscribe and tap that bell for notifications so you know every single time that i post i cover love and marriage detroit real housewives of atlanta love and marriage huntsville and a little sprinkle of celebrity news as well so make sure you subscribe and i'll see you guys later bye